Okay, so as of today, okay, or any programs after today, not the ones uh, that were due this morning anyway, um, all your programs have to run multiple times. In other words, the program should only stop if the student or the student, if the user um, wants to stop the program, okay? Also, we're gonna take a look at, um, I think it's in this one. Let me think what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're gonna start checking for valid input. Okay, right now, uh, or as up, up to today, your programs, um, if you had to put in a number and you typed in a letter, your program would crash, okay? So after this lesson or starting with this lesson, our programs will uh, not allow uh, people to put in um, invalid input, okay? So we'll be checking to see if it says they got to put in a Boolean and it has to be a Boolean. If it says they have to put in a integer, it has to be an integer. If we say it has to be a double, it'll have to be a double, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, we will uh, enforce that as we go from uh, here on. Don't lose points for things like that, okay? So you need to be able to, you need to understand uh, what's going on in these loops, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of go over it. I'm gonna use Excel, I think, to uh, explain how that works. I thought I had a, well, I guess I don't, no, that's all right. We can, I'll just wing it. Okay, raise lottery logic. No, 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 that ain't what I want. All right, so blank worksheet. All right, so loops, okay, or repetition, or some people call it iteration, because that's what we have, we, re we have iterations, okay. There's um, a couple ways we do it. The keywords that we're gonna deal with uh, for the most part, are do and while and for. Okay, so those are the main three loops. You might wonder why there's three. Okay, well, the first one, a do loop, is what we call a pre test loop or pre-process, some people will call it. So I'm just gonna call it pre, I'm sorry. It's a post test loop. A while loop is a pre-test loop. And a for loop, uh, la, 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 what would it be? It's not really a pre, it's a counting loop is what most people call it, but it would be, it could be a pre, I guess. Okay. The main ones we're gonna deal with today or in the next couple of weeks though are the first two. This one, the for loop's gonna come around when we start talking about arrays. And what this means, this post test is that this loop will always run at least one time. This one may never run at all. And we're gonna just skip over the last one for now. So in other words, depending on what, well, let's explain this first. There's four parts of a loop. You aren't sharing your screen, Doug. Oh, man. Why didn't somebody say something? I'm going to have to go all back over this. 
don't even see where you guys are at now. Everybody's going to sit there through the whole lecture, right? Okay. So here's the repetition iteration. Three types of loops. This, the do is a post test, the while is a pre test, the for it could be a pre test, okay? And this one will always run at least one time. This one may never run at all. That's because there's four parts to a loop, okay? The first part is initialize. Or initialization. The next part is test. The next part is process. And the last part is incrementation or increment. Okay. So the order in which these things happen determines which one of these I want to use. So if I, I'm, if I always want, let's say I'm using a do loop to uh, control my program, um, which, would, which is what we'll do, because I want the program, the one when the, when the user runs it, I want it to at least run one time, okay? So that's a do loop. That means that the uh, initialization process an increment, I'm sorry, the process is going to come before the test, okay? In a while loop, it might be, uh, oh, it could be like um, where we would test whether or not the person put in a number or not. That would be a while test because if they put in a number, then the, the loop will never run at all. But if they put in a letter, it'll keep beating them up until they put in a number. Okay. This for loop down here, it's a lot of times called a counting loop. And that'll become important later on. But they all have this, they all have these things right here. When we run into trouble is right here. When people forget to increment their loop. And if you forget to increment your loop, what happens is you get an infinite loop. One that runs forever. You can't turn it off. And that's bad, okay? An infinite loop is bad. We don't want it to keep running. We want it to come up and says, do you want to try again? Yes. We don't want it just to keep going. Do you want to try again? Do you want to try again? Do you want to try again? Do you, where I can't put anything in or the user can't stop it, uh, which becomes a major problem. Petition uh, iteration, boom, boom, boom. So you got to have these four things. We initialize it to some value. We test whether or not that is true or false. If it's true, we continue on and we do some type of process. And finally, um, we need to change that value that we initialize it to so that it be can be tested again. Okay, and then if it's, that it's true again, we go through it again until it becomes false. And when it becomes false, boom, we exit out, okay? So that's basically how loops work. And remember, this is the third type of um, procedural programming. We had the uh, sequential, then we had the decision, and now we have the uh, repetition. Okay. Questions? Okay, nobody's saying anything. They won't, people won't even tell me if the screen's on or not. So why would I expect anybody to say, yeah, I understand. Oh boy. 
All right. Uh, so you're going to read uh, uh, read this chapter. We're going to stay in it for at least two weeks. The assignments this week are these three. We're going to do this one today. Uh, there is an example of play it again, and uh, I'll show you how that works. But the first one up here, is you're going to take, the user is going to input a number in decimal form, and you're going to turn it into a binary digit. And I just so happen to know that 247 in binary is 11110111. That means it's got one group of ones, one group of twos, one group of fours, no eights, a 16, a 32, uh, 60, is that right? Where am I at? Ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty-two, sixty-fours, and one, one twenty-eight. Okay. And how I got that is I start with 247 divided by two and I get this remainder and I save it. Then whatever that number is, I divide that by two and get the remainder. The remainder is one. Divide this one, the remainder is one. And if you look at this, it's this number backwards, okay? So it, if you look, the numbers going up this way come out to this number. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna save the first one. Then you're gonna append, append on the front of that, the next number, not on the end of it, on the front of it. And then you append the next one on the front of that and on the front of that. If you don't, what you'll end up with, if you append it on the end, you're going to end up with 11101111, which is wrong to be, that's not 247, for example. So that's how that one works. The second one is you're going to write a program. Um, is that you're going to roll a, uh, or um, flip a, a coin one million times and show me the output, okay? And it should come, you know, make sure that you randomize it inside the loop because if you don't, if you just keep running it, it'll get the same numbers every time. Um, but you're gonna create a million times it's gonna run through there. Don't print them all out. You only print out the totals. So you're going to run the program and add one to either heads or tails each time it comes up. So the random number you need is a two. So you can get a zero and a one, make the zero heads, make the one tails, and then you run it. And then you have two variables that uh, you add to. Okay. Uh, there is a little bit of extra credit in that one if you can figure out who Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are and make it part of your program. The one we're going to work on today is elementary math. Um, and uh, you'll see how that one works when we get to it. I did, uh, if we go back to... Uh, Hello. I gave you some uh, different ones here just so you can look at them on. I think the links still work anyway. Okay, so. Uh, let's see, where is it? So if you run these, hey, welcome back. This is Jeremy, and today don't we're going to get any attention. This is in a This is in a so it's repetition. Well, it's also known as iterations or looping. Right, looping is probably a, a little more lecture on uh, on the three different types of loops. Any question on that? 
Okay. Oh, that one's a mess. You guys still seeing my screen, I hope. Yes, we, I can. Yeah. yeah. All right. So a new program here, we'll call it file or new project, whatever. Ant. And what do I want to call this? Uh, Acme Math Tutor. Now this is a math tutor, so it has to come up with questions and uh, not only come up with questions, but the answers and tell the student it should be uh, user friendly because it is for little kids, okay? So this is what it's gonna do. So um, project will be the Acme Math Tutor. And this is the Acme Math Tutor Java. And the date today is the 21 of SEP 2020. The author is, in this case, me. And the purpose a program. Uh, helps a young student study uh, math operations using uh, values up to uses values from zero to nine in okay. uh, things that no negative numbers are allowed. No fractions are allowed. Uh, division by zero, of course, is illegal. And in division, the quotient will not be more than nine. Okay, so that's the basic rules. Oh, let's do the, the user. So once again, if I know that there's gonna be a user inputting stuff, I need to uh, provide a scanner. There it locks up every frame. I don't know what I do that causes that on mine. Then we'll come up and put something goofy in there.
There we go. All right. And I know I'm going to need random numbers. All right. So that looks okay. Clean it up a little bit. I like this indented more. Get rid of this again. Once you move on, you can learn about Java docs if you so desire. And this one goes down here. Nicely lined up, looking good. All right, so I'm going to create my scanner here. And uh, something to that effect. Okay, that looks good there. All right, so I want the program to run more than one time. So I'm going to put a do here. And it's going to scream at us because I don't have my while that goes down here. Okay, so do. And I'll just do this to make some room because all right now all of our code is going to go inside of here. Has to, okay? And here we're going to have system dot out dot print. You know what? I can eat, simplify that. That's much simpler. And that's not right. Jeez. Okay, what do we want to do here? Um, let's see what I want us to do, play, call it. I'm going to declare this somewhere else, so just, it's going to scream at us for a minute here. in okay I like that. Up here, right underneath your scanner, we're going to declare a variable. It's of the char type char, and it's going to be called play again, like that. So what this says, you should know, uh, since we studied that chapter, whatever they're going to put in here is going to turn it to uppercase, and it's going to pick off the first letter. And I think we've actually gone over that before. So down here now, I'm going to put while play again is equal to. Now, this is a char, so it's only single quotes. And I'll put a capital Y in there because I'm going to switch whatever they type in 
to a uppercase uh, uppercase. And I can test this now even by running it. And it says enter Y to continue. So if I type in lowercase Y, it continues. Uppercase Y, it continues. Yankee, it continues. Yak, it continues. Yes, it continues. Any other thing I put in, it quits. Doesn't have to be an N or whatever. It can be anything, it can be a digit, a period. Uh, oh, come on, why did I run it again? All right, so that works. So I know that works. So um, if mine is not running more than once, then I would have a problem. So I'm building this piece by piece and this part works, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, uh, so what do we want to start with here? We'll go ahead and put our, so let's see here. Let's annotate this a little bit for the first one. So again, here's my initialization up here. Here's my process here. Here's my increment here. And here's my test here. So they're not in the, you know, the normal order because this one isn't tested until it's ran through one time already, okay? So this is actually here. This is increment. This is test. Something to that effect. All right, so now Let's get some type of input. Oops. And there's multiple ways to do this. This is just my choice. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
And then Maybe I'll do this. like that. All right. Come back to that here in a minute. So let's go. here this way. So switch choice. And I'm just going to stub these in for right now. So that. Okay. 
Oops, not liking that. Why is that today? I shouldn't have to do this. Oh, nobody say anything. <laughs> Jeez, that's what it is. I thought. Oh, because I never <sighs> choice. So you build this, again, it's called stubbing in so that we can check it in a minute here. change that.
we'll do this instead. Change this to this for now. And in here, we'll just put that Okay, so I'll let you look at that for a minute. Well, let me test it first, make sure we're okay. So I want to test all of them. So if I type in an A, it says addition is here. If I type an S, it says subtraction is here. If I type an M, it says multiply is here. If I type a D, it says division is here. If I type in a B, C, D, it says, thank for you for using Acme products. Goodbye. So that looks like it is working. Oh, come on. So I'll let you guys copy that for a minute. And I'm out of soda. So just get it so it kind of works like this. I could indent this a little more, maybe make it look a little bit better. There we go. input up above so we can make this process I think in a sense even though they're going to have to input something here in a minute, uh, the answers Okay, so now that I got it stubbed in, I can go ahead and do a couple things here. Uh, the loop is doing that, it keeps coming around. So I think I'm gonna put my random numbers down here maybe. I could declare them up there. Okay, I'm gonna declare my random up here. Here, I think. So it's going to be random. And uh, RN 
D is equal to a new random. That'll work. And maybe I'll go ahead and declare my int num1. I think I'll make it, z I can do a negative one here. It might scream at us, but that's okay. I like when it does. <laughs> okay, so I got two numbers. Da, 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 da. Okay. So now after they choose, let's put it here. Or after the process. So num1 is going to be a number, rnd dot next int up to zero through nine. And num2 will be a number zero through nine. And that's what I need there. I know they're going to be integers because the rules up here says no fractions are allowed. Okay. So I know that. So now I have my two numbers. Well, if it's addition, I want it to look like this. Okay, system up print. And it's going to be num1. Plus. Oops. Plus. space plus space plus oops come on plus num2 plus equals Something to that effect. Num1 plus num2 plus equal sign. That's what I want. And then we could put, maybe we should do this too. Instead of having it there, we'll just do this. good. Okay. So then up here, we're going to need one called int computer answer.
and then user answer. Okay, so the computer answer on this one will be equal to num1 plus num2. And then the user, I should probably put that up underneath it. So user answer will be equal to no, it won't. It'll be while. And then that, what I call it, student in. And again, this is kind of helping the student. See this one? If what they type in is an integer, this loop never runs. So if they put in the wrong, like if they type the letter A, it's just going to keep beating them up asking for the right answer. Okay. We got that. We got that. Okay. Let's see what happens if we type A now. The answer is that. Okay, so if I type an A, it says six foot four, is, and if I put in 10, that's fine. If I type in A, and it gives me that, and then I say it's the letter A, B, C, it says that is not a valid answer. But if I was to type in, even if it's wrong, the number two, it lets me do that, okay? Any other key to exit? And that works. Now, later on, we could move this out of here and put it someplace else in its own little. But for right now, we'll reuse that over and over and over again. OK. Let's make another variable up here called uh, Ah, oh, let's 
let's have one called int correct. And int count. Maybe. And right here, right at the top, I'm going to say count plus plus. So that adds. that counts increments by one every time. And then here, if, let's see, where do I want to put that? Oh, I guess that's perfect. If user answer is equal to comp answer, then what do we want it to do? Well, nothing more than, and you don't even need a, uh, braces here, but I'll put them in anyway. The uh, correct plus plus. And maybe So here again, we display the question. The student puts in their answer. We store it. The computer answer is calculated. If the user answer is equal to the computer answer, they get a plus to the correct and a good job. If it isn't, they get, uh, sorry, study more. And now we need to just display at the end here. That's not it. What is it? Correct. Just Let's see what happens. Okay, A, I have a five. Is that correct? 
correct. Good job. I'm going to do the A again. I'll get this one wrong. I'll just put three. And then I'm going to exit. The w. Said I had one out of three. One out of three. Wait a minute. Why would it be the three? Oh, because when you go to exit, it had already added one. So I need to fix this. Good. Correct. Count. The menu comes up, it's already added one. Hmm. So if I make count equal to negative one, I think that'll fix that. Okay, so here's my top part now. And again, these, just saying that these are never, so if you, if you want to get rid of those, just saying they're never used until you get to the uh, actually assigning them something. So it really doesn't matter. It's just always a good idea to initialize your variables, but NetBeans is like yelling at you that there. But then again, you saw when I didn't put a Y in here, it yelled at me because I didn't initialize it. What's this one say? The sign value is never used. See, again, I can get rid of this apparently and nothing happens to my program. How are we doing? Doing good. My case S says- What now? Uh, in the switch statement, uh, I have case S for subtraction. And it says orphaned case. Are you missing this? Uh, yeah. Let me let me see. That's why I like this indentation. I try to make it. Oops, not even right. Indentation right there. Make sure everything lines up because my A runs from there to there. Yeah, we're good now. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to come down here, get rid of that, and then I'm going to copy, I'm going to go enter first, put this in, and then I'll take all this right here, control C it, come down here, click right there, and then control V to paste it in there. So blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, but we need to do something. We need to change this to a minus sign, but I said there can't be any negative numbers. So I have to fix this, that. And this is an algorithm for switching those. I'm gonna say, uh, in temp and if num1 is less than num2 then what I want to do is this. I want to take and make temp equal to num1. I want num2 or num1 
to become num2. And then I want num2 to become temp. Okay. And I'll never get a negative number that way. So all I'm doing is switching these. Num one, be, num two becomes num one. Num one becomes num two. And this is going to be a minus here. And that checks that. That is not a value. Re-enter the answer, student. Next, okay. User is equal to that. The computer answer this time will be a minus sign. And that should work, I believe. Let's try it. So now if I enter an S, so seven minus six, so I put a one in there. I do an S again. Four minus three is a one. Do an S, oops. Do an S again. Oh man, they're all ones. Why is that just dumb luck? Oh, there we go. Nine minus three is six. And then I'll type a W or something. And it says you had four out of four, correct? Okay. So there's that one. The next one. Did you guys get that? I'm sorry. Here, let me. Can you get it to exit the loop? What do you enter? Negative one or? Huh? What do you enter for it to exit the loop and tell you your anything? Score? Anything. Anything except A, S, M, and D. Because I have it right here. Default. The next one's an easy one. We just come here, get rid of that, put our braces in, control V and paste that in again. And this time it'll say, we don't have to worry about negative numbers and the like. This will become a X. I put an X in because I like it to look like that because little kids aren't going to know what an ampersand is. But when we get down here to computer answer, it needs to be a, I mean, not an asterisk. And we put the asterisk there and our multiplication is done. So this becomes an X and this becomes a uh, do, 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 an uh, asterisk. Same thing here. This one's a little more difficult. So we're going to get rid of that. Paste in. And then this will become this. And we need a division symbol here. So we'll put that in like that. 
And then this one's a little bit different, okay? So we're gonna go here and we're gonna say that if, uh, again, you can divide into zero, you just can't have uh, if num2 is equal to zero. then num2 is equal to one. That's the easiest way to get rid of that. So this one here prevents illegal division by zero. The next one is so that we'll never have a fraction when we divide. Because right now, if I do 10, divided by three or something like that, or nine divided by two, I'm gonna have a fraction. I don't want fractions. So what I'm gonna do here is um, have a, uh, what would be dividend divisor in quotient. So a new dividend, I think that's what it's called anyway is equal to num1 times num2, okay? So then we're gonna replace, right there is gonna say dividend, okay? And then right here for the computer answer will be num1. So what it says basically is this. So let's say it has a, um, the, um, a three and a three, okay, or no, a three and a four. So then it multiplies that, this becomes 12. So now I have 12 divided or 12 divided by four is an even number, it's three. So the computer answer will be three. Again, if it's uh, five and three, makes this 15, makes this 15. So it reads 15 divided by three, and my answer down here is five. So it'll always give me an even number no, uh, what you call it, fractions. And basically my program should run now for all of them. So I'm gonna test it multiple times, of course. So I'll start out with a D. Zero divided by eight, I'll make it zero. It says correct, good job. I'll do another D. I'll get this one wrong on, pro on purpose. I'll say 45 divided by five is nine, but I'll make it seven. It says, sorry, study more. Let's try an M. Five times zero, we'll make it zero. And we'll get another one wrong and an M. Uh, nine times six is 48. I'll make it 49. And then uh, a subtraction. Nine minus four should be five. Another subtraction, I'll get it wrong. Three minus zero, I'll make it two. Uh, an A, uh, four plus three is seven. And then another A, one plus zero, I'll make it zero. And let's try to make something. And then uh, let's see what it looks like any other key, so I'll type in a W. And it says you had four out of eight correct, and that's right. Thank you for using Acme products. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all this extraneous room here. And I'm gonna come down here and just do, 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 do. No code follows. 
Okay. So anybody that was typing along that theirs is not running, tell me where you need to see. So everybody that was, was anybody typing along? Could you scroll down to the very bottom, Doug? Just for a second, I need to check. That's all right. This one here, this is actually the increment. Can you explain the default again for me, what that means? That just means anything but, if they any, enter anything but A, S, M, or D, it would be the default. Oh, okay, thank you. How would you make it so that um, when at the end of to answer the problem, you're prompted to enter Y to start the program over again? How would you make it so that if you entered anything else to terminate the program, it would also? Well, that's what I have now. That's why I made this an X. It just keeps running because it never changes from Y. Okay. Uh, right. Right now. Because I have Y up here. If I change that right now, the program will stop. Unless I go, no matter what. Right, but it would not tell you your score. Huh? But it wouldn't show me my score, no. You have to select... Um, this has to be a Y, the way I have it set up, this has to be a Y initially. You go through it, it's set to Y. So unless I come down here and say that I want to exit, which is the default, it changes to X. But if it isn't, it stays Y and I go back into the program again. And it runs it again. So I mean, when you enter your response and it tells you whether or not you got it correct. Enter, yes. Whether you got it correct or not, yep. enter Y to start over again. I don't have but that right now. Something else. I don't have that right now. That's a different, we had that at the beginning. So if you want to know how to do that, watch the first part of the video. And that one, that's how you do where you have to enter a Y to keep it going. We've got it set up in this one because we have this switch here that the only thing they have to do is in the menu up here, if they select anything but A, S, M, and D, it goes to the default, which changes that test or the increment to an X, which then knocks it out of the program. So the student doesn't have to type a Y. All they have to do is type in the, when they're in the menu, they type anything except the four valid things. In other words, I could, I could start this thing and I'll type a period or a, a semicolon. and it knocks me out of the program. Right, but to go through it and put in a response. Huh? Go through it and put in a response? Yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on. So I go to A, it says eight plus six is I'll put 14, and then I hit enter. And then it comes back and asks me, do I want to do another one or do I want to exit? Let's say you want to exit. Yeah, I can type any letter. 
except A, S, M, and D. So I could type the letter K and when I'm out of the part. So it shows me my score. I had one out of one correct. I think I had another example here. Hang on. Uh, do, 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 do. Come on. Okay, let's go here. So here's one. That runs ask you, do you want to continue or not? And if I hit a Y, it runs again. If I type in yak, it runs again. If I type in any other letter like a C, it quits. Even though, even though we're prompting for an N here, it could be any, uh, do you wish to continue? And then you just put why do you continue others? Something like that. So I gave you this example is in um, is in the homework assignment at the top of the homework assignment. You just have to download it and out like here and then unzip it to get it to work. Any other question? Who isn't working that wants help? Anybody? Um, I'm getting an error when I try to run. It says no main class found. Uh, apparently you didn't put it in, in uh, ant. Hmm. Did you start it in ant? I thought I did. I'll look. Or did you... Here, did you get rid of, do you have public here? I do. All right, uh, go ahead and here, hang on a minute. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, go ahead and share yours. Let's see what what's going on here. Run it. Expand it out so we can. No man class on math tutor class one. Okay. Cancel that. Go up to run. Why is it? Oh, somebody, let's see, man. Go up to run. Click on run up at the top in your main menu. Click on it. 
uh, clean and build project. Try that. Uh, now try running it. Hmm. That's interesting. Math tutor, math tutor class. Uh, change your, the capital M in public class math tutor, change that to a small letter M. That doesn't work. Uh, change it back. Okay. So now go ahead and don't forget to put your purpose in here. You're going to lose the whole point uh, before you turn it in. Just do a control A. Okay, control C. And then go up to file. New project. Okay, next. And make it, uh, oh, just make it, what did we call it here? How about we put ja, uh, Acme in front of it this time? Capital A, capital A, M E, capital math, capital T. That's what it should look like. Hit finish. Okay, now get rid of everything and paste. Okay, scroll up, make that uh, Acme Math Tutor. Make that uh, Acme Math Tutor with a capital, just the way it's spelled up there. No. Okay. Now run it. What the hell? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I don't know why that's... Does he have, like, more things running? Because I see at the bottom oh. right it says two or more. Where? Yeah, you should never do this, first of all. You got, like, 20 th things in your thing here. It, I don't know that we're even running this one. Click up on Acme Math Tutor once in your project window. Go up to the Acme above that. That, yeah. Jeez. Uh, um, go ahead, try it now. The Acme Math Tutor dot. I don't know where that's coming from, class. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Get rid of the math tutor one below it. Up, keep going down, 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 down. Right up above, up, up, up. Underneath lottery. Right click that. Right click. Close. Say save all, it don't matter. Jeez uh, Louise. Um, Acme Math Tutor, Acme Math Tutor dot Java. Public class, Acme Math Tutor. It's inside Acme Math Tutor. Click on Acme Math Tutor dot Java now and run it. What is going on? Cancel it. Go up to uh, run. Um, 
say build project this time. Oh, what's this warning thing here? The yellow light bulb. Missing Java doc, clean subclass. Check his files folder. That's, I found uh, in the files option, I found a file called the, uh, the math tutor dot class in the build part. Where's it at now? Under um, his... It's by the project service files thing, right, it's right above the Acme tutor dot Java thing. Oh, go um, to files. Not that one, the other no. one down right up straight up now right no a little more a little more to your right click check the acme math tutor click in that i just found in build classes math tutor that's where the class is at least so it's there. Why is that not? Hmm. I don't know. Should be okay, I think. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, click on that light bulb again. Hit control alt or alt or enter. Alt enter. See if it brings anything up. Missing Java doc. We don't care. Create test class, create subclass. Hmm. Any ideas, anybody? So I had a similar issue the other day. I, my issue was I mistyped something, but it wasn't recognizing my main method. It couldn't find it, so it didn't know what to run. It looks like he didn't make the same issue I am, or I did, but he's getting the same error message. So I think it's just not recognizing his main method. Okay. So, but why? Why is it not recognizing? Uh, go to refactor. Let's see what we got under that. Remove. See if we, hit rename. Oh, yeah, see, it doesn't like that. It okay. Just something with the... Okay, let's try it again. Do a control... Um, I'm sorry. Control A. And do, do, do. Oh, what's this down here? Uh, before we do that, let's see what that light bulb is. Oh, that's just uh, all right. Control A again. Control C. Uh, okay, close uh, Acme Math Tutor. Or right click on it. Over in your there, yes. Right click. Oh, no, up, up, up. Right click. Right click. There you go. Uh, do, whoop. Click back. Uh, what'd you do? You closed it. I didn't want you to close it. Um, Okay, file, I guess. New project. 
and click on uh, Java application over on the, okay, hit next. Oh, let's see here. Create a main class, that's right. Uh, I click the one, use dedicated, click that too. Make this uh, Acme Acme Math Tutor one, and go ahead and build it. Okay, just stop right there. Now, what I want you to do this time is right below that last um, brace down there. Yeah, paste it. Okay. Don't worry about that. Just hit okay. Okay. Oh, did you paste it? Yeah, scroll up. All right. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so I put in the scanner and that. So get rid of um, those, all the red lines. Everything of the red next to it right now. Yep, all that. Just hit delete. Okay, get rid of that next line down. That's red. That's red. Get rid of that. No, no, no. Not that one. That one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You can get rid of, get rid of the next line down. All right. Now, from right there, start hitting backspace. Keep going. You can redo this part. Keep going. Keep going. Right. Keep going. Stop. Now get rid of the brace and the end of the line above. Okay, scroll up. Scroll down. Keep going all the way down. Run it. How in the hell is that possible? Cancel that. I don't know. It's something with your net beans. Mm -hmm. Or there's, I just don't get it because that should have worked. Scroll up. There's something wrong. Math tutor one, math tutor one. So that's Did you already try closing the like app completely. You know what? Let's do that. Close the whole app. Oh, save first. Okay, now close it. And you know what? I'll bet you it worked. Well, look at how many processes you got going too. It gets mixed up after a while. Okay, now run Java again. Run that beans. Now open up Hackney Math Tutor One. Now run it. There you go. Who said did you try to close it once? Me. 
Amber. Amber, send me a note that to give you five extra credit points. Okay, thanks. All right, anybody else? If you got it, uh, if you keep doing and doing and doing and doing, the the program gets whacked out. And she was right. We should have stopped. We should have done it. We were probably correct the first time we did it. Okay. So we all are. You learned something. I should have known better. Anybody else want to try? All right. So that's my song and dance for today then. And uh, I will see you uh, Wednesday for lab time probably. Do, do come because if I think of something we need to, to look at, um, or you never know, we might have a little quick quiz over what we looked at today. All right. Have a good one. See you guys Have a good day. and ladies. See ya. See ya. Dave, you got something for me? David? Yes, not.